are very delighted to be partnering with PAX, Process Excellence Network. Uh, especially this year, there is a significant focus on automation, RPA, cognitive and AI technologies. So we are very delighted to be here and uh, looking forward to share many of our customer stories on how the uh, world is transforming with, uh, with uh, uh, what we call digital workforce. It's a combination of RPA, cognitive and analytics. By end of 2017, you will see about 75% of the Fortune, 100 com uh, Fortune 1000 companies uh, embark on an RPA journey. So that's about that's 750 of the world's largest companies. So in that sense, it is beyond an hype. I think the conversation is moving from what is RPA to how to do it at a speed and a scale. And that's where the discussion would be focused in 2017. The other area uh, the, the 2017 is will focus on is cognitive, how to integrate cognitive RPA and analytics together to create end-to-end -end digital story. So the nature of conversation will change, but it will continue to expand at a rapid pace. We have seen RPA adopted uh, across all industries, from banking, financial services, insurance, retail, healthcare, technology, you name it, right? Across the board, the adoption is there. But if you are looking for some place to start, you may want to look at if you have a large shared service group or an operations team, where large number of standardized processes are being executed, that's a one good place to look at. Uh, in that specifically finance and accounting processes have a huge amount of traction. I would say about 30 to 40 percent of all of our deployment touch finance and accounting processes in some sense. But again, this is not limited to any one particular vertical. Across the board, uh, across any vertical, across any process, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process agnostic, so you could apply it anywhere. That's the beauty of RPA, right? So the it can because it mimics human behavior. Uh, it can read off any screens. It can write on any any application. It can apply a set of rules. It can operate any application just like people can. So it can adjust to any changes in an underlying application at a much faster rate, just like people can adjust. So that's the power of RPA technology. Enterprise-wide scale is the key, 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 uh, key, uh, is the key word here. How to do RPA at an enterprise-wide scale? There are two components to it. There is a technology component. So for example, last year we announced an availability of a bot farm uh, product we have, which is making bots available on demand where you need it for however time you need it, uh, in whatever size and quantity you need it. So that kind of a platform allows you to scale enterprise-wide. The second part of enterprise scale deployment is methodology on how do you scale something from, let's say you start with about 10 to 30 digital workforce to 3,000 digital workforce. So we and our partners have developed a maturity model on how an enterprises would scale at that scale uh, in about one to two years to, 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 to that kind of size and scale. Uh, so there, there are two components to it and both are equally important. Products and methodology and how to go about it. So I would say that think big, start small and execute fast. That's, that's the mantra here. So you, uh, you have to first of all think about RPA differently, slightly differently than how you've thought of previous automation technologies whether it is BPM, EAI, ETL, and other three-letter acronyms that are out there. Uh, because it is possible to completely digitally transform yourself in two years with thousands of digital workforce, unlike any other prior technology. Um, one good place to start is to create a center of excellence and create an organization that continuously learn and improves. Uh, and rapidly transforms across enterprise-wide. Uh, again, going back to about in two years, you want to get to about 3,000 digital workforce globally. I think my top tip for an RPA best practice is uh, figure out which processes you're going to focus first. Uh, and whatever you start with, there are, two, there are two approaches you can take. Either you can go, uh, go deep or go wide. Uh, by When I say go deep, you can take one department, one or two processes and do end-to-end -end process automation. Or you can start wide, which is go across many departments and tackle hundreds of processes. Both are acceptable approaches. 
But if you start with a deep approach, don't take too long to go wide because your learnings from a single department may not scale across organization. So at some point you want to go wide and, and scale it across departments. Again, starting with a center of excellence is a great place to start. I think it is fantastic to share our experiences with the PEX network community. They are the right people to lead this transformation and looking for a two-way dialogue, uh, sharing our stories and learning from them how they are seeing uh, their organizations transforming on, on this journey as well.